For more on the upcoming political season in China, we're joined by Dolly Yang at the University of Chicago. He's a professor in the Department of Political Science there, and we want to thank you for joining us. Um, any surprises to you when it comes to those online responses? Uh, not at all. The uh, broad, actually, the uh, public are very concerned about those issues. And of course, there are some other issues, too, including the environment and so on. Uh, but overall, though, uh, those are the bigger issues facing the country. You know, it's interesting in the online survey, people see employment as a key issue. And interestingly enough, during the five-year plan, it was also a goal, and it was one of the goals met, 13 million new jobs generated, exceeding the target of 10 million. But in recent days, we've been talking about layoffs coming in the coal and steel sectors as China tries to transition its economy. Talk to me about this delicate juggling act that uh, China's facing now. Well, it's certainly uh, a juggling act that many countries have to go uh, uh, through as they move up the, uh, uh, the value-added chain and become more service-oriented, generally speaking. So as a result, China today is truly a country of two different economies. The old line uh, industries, including coal, steel, and other kind of heavy industry, are really suffering uh, a deep freeze. Whereas there is a lot of dynamism in services, for example, online services. China tops the world in the number of people who make online payments today. So in that sense, actually, depending on which sector you are in, uh, a Chinese may feel very differently about the economy. Overall, however, the numbers we are talking about in terms of potential unemployment and so on is relatively small. China went through extremely wrenching adjustments in the 1990s with the downsizing of the state sector. Uh, state sector. Today, however, the five, six million people that people are talking about are rel relatively modest. And of course, there is also a social welfare system in place today. Also, China has an aging population. We've talked a lot about that. And statistics indicate that uh, people over 60 will make up about a third of the population by the middle of the century. century rather. Is this something that they'll discuss as well? And is there some way to address that issue? Yeah, I think uh, let's keep in mind the CPPCC has about 2,200 members. They play an advisory role. But being advisors, however, to the government gives them a front seat role in terms of presenting their proposals. Last year, there were more than 6,000 proposals that were made. So there's a lot of talent am among members of the CPPCC. And aging and the challenges of reforming the welfare system and so on will definitely be one of those. Uh, as the population ages, the uh, uh, burden uh, or the challenges of uh, caring uh, for the elderly and also paying for the retirements will become much more challenging. So in that sense, actually, China faces the tasks of reforming uh, both the welfare system as well as in generating, actually, uh, raising uh, fertility, for example, and also taking care of the, uh, of the elderly in terms of health care as well. Yeah, as this thing wraps up in the next couple of weeks, uh, what do you expect to see as the, the headlines? Uh, what are you expecting to come out of the next couple of weeks? Well, uh, I think actually what's interesting is some of the things that are unanticipated. For example, already a member of the CPPCC, Mr. Zhu, already raised a lot of uh, uh, interesting concerns and interest, public interest, uh, when he mentions that he wants to see a fairer justice system. He was concerned, for example, that some people have been asked to make confessions on the, uh, for example, on television. And that has been widely reported in China. And I think actually those kind of uh, arguments and proposals will get a lot of attention, can be quite constructive in terms of getting people to think, oh, maybe there is a different way of doing things. Dali Yang joining us from Chicago. Thanks so much.